fight. When thinking of the destruction and mayhem in Godzilla movies, additional characters spring to mind, as Godzilla's enemies would have to be just as interesting and dynamic as he is to keep the fights interesting and engaging for the viewer. Eiji Tsuburaya used a technique when he created Godzilla where he placed an actor in a rubber suit for the monster effects, which is referred to as suitmation. In contrast, 1933's King Kong had used stop motion. Along with the rubber suits, he had used high speed filming and extreme lighting which gave that extra realistic touch to make the monsters seem more hefty and slow. This technique has been continuously used over dozens of Godzilla movies as new allies and enemies appeared. Over the years, Godzilla has fought many, many, many different enemies. We won't list them all now, but we can go through a couple of the most common and well-known ones. King Ghidorah is one of the most famous monsters. He's a golden three-headed dragon that can fly and uses lightning-like gravity beams. He also can cause extreme gusts of wind with his wings. He can be viewed as another alpha that directly challenges Godzilla's reign. Next up is Rodan. He's called Redan in Japanese, which is a contraction of Pteranodon. You might remember those flying around Jurassic World with Jimmy Buffett. Interestingly enough, Pteranodons are not dinosaurs, they are pterosaurs. The difference between pterosaurs and dinosaurs are that dinosaurs have a hole in their hip socket and a long crest in their upper arm bones, where pterosaurs do not. Also, the Mosasaurus is not a dinosaur either. And there you go. That is the important lesson for today. Just because two things look the same do not mean that they are related. So back to Rodan. A couple of his common abilities are his quick flight speed, life absorption, and atomic heat ray. Another well-known character would be Mothra. The name obviously comes from the character being a gigantic moth though the character design itself resembles more of a butterfly, as she has the coloring of a peacock butterfly and mandibles like a caddisfly. Mothra is usually summoned by two fairies singing the Song of Mothra. A few of her best known abilities are supersonic flight, antenna beams, and immortality. As such, when she dies, she becomes reincarnated through divine methods, so time after time she can rise like a phoenix. She's also considered the queen of the monsters, with some type of link to Godzilla. Jet Jaguar was created from a contest that Toho had in the 1970s, where they wanted fans to submit ideas for a new hero, as they wanted to capitalize on the popular anime superhero and robot shows at the time. The winner was a drawing of a robot called Red Alone, which looked quite a bit like Ultraman. The design was changed a bit and renamed to Jet Jaguar. They did not believe that Jet Jaguar could hold the film alone, however, and ended up pairing him up with Godzilla to fight a couple of enemies. Muto, or a massive unidentified terrestrial organism, is a type of kaiju that was recently created for the 2014 Godzilla. Muto was actually the name that was provided by Monarch before providing a specific name. And even Godzilla was known as a Muto before being given its own name. These specific Mutos, though, are kaiju that have known male and female differences. 
The male Muto has wings, and the female Muto has eight legs. The female is also about 100 feet taller than the male. They can cause electromagnetic interference with their EMP-like abilities. Over the years, Godzilla has allied or fought against over 35 monsters. Some enemies become allies in certain films so that things are always interesting and exciting. He's fought everything from Mechagodzilla and Mecha King Ghidorah to less notable enemies like the Giant Condor. What about King Kong? Well, King Kong was actually created before Godzilla in 1933. King Kong was not initially supposed to fight Godzilla and was instead supposed to head into combat with a large version of Frankenstein's monster. This never came to fruition as studios were not receptive to the stop motion animation technique. When King Kong finally fought Godzilla, the movie contained more humor as E.G. Tsuburaya wanted to make Godzilla movies lighter and appeal to children's sensibilities and widen the audience. Ishiro Honda was not a fan of this though and did not believe that monsters should be comical characters. The movie did contain scenes of King Kong flying in on balloons, so it's evident on who won that argument. 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla led the highest Japanese box office attendance figures in the entire Godzilla franchise to this very day. A similar box office battle might take place next year when Hollywood has a go at the two meeting. And that's when King Kong's gonna beat Godzilla. I would guess that it's going to end up more like a Batman vs Superman scenario where they're going to fight for a while and then team up against a larger threat. Team up after King Kong beats Godzilla. Speaking of the Monsterverse, here's a riddle. What do you get when you mix Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, King Ghidorah, a waffle connoisseur, Tywin Lannister, a crouching tiger, a lady with a love of fish, a guy trying to shove Verizon service down your throat, a demonologist, Ra's al Ghul, Ice Cube, and Ving Rhames. You get Godzilla 2, King of the Monsters. Godzilla has 32 films that have been produced by Toho and 3 Hollywood films, which will be 4 Hollywood films by 2020. This will put the count at 36 films not including the four foreign adaptations of original Japanese films. For a bit of comparison, Harry Potter has eight films, Star Wars has 11 films, Friday the 13th has 12 films, Star Trek has 13 films, the Marvel Cinematic Universe in total has 23 films, and James Bond is only up to 26 films. Outside of films, he's also fought many less expected adversaries such as S.H.I.E.L.D., the Fantastic Four, and the Avengers. So who knows, maybe he'll make an appearance in Phase 4. Godzilla remains the most recognizable kaiju in the world, as he's etched himself into pop culture history in numerous ways. He even has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This alone is quite a feat as some of the most recognizable and renowned actors don't even have a star. Like Leonardo DiCaprio, Clint Eastwood, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, Jim Carrey, Will Smith, and even the famous filmmaker George Lucas. So now that the dance party is over, back to Godzilla. Godzilla was awarded the MTV Lifetime Achievement Award in 1996, joining the fictional character likes of Jason Voorhees, The Three Stooges, John Shaft, Chewbacca, and Jackie Chan. It was presented by Captain Picard himself, Patrick Stewart, and Godzilla producer Shogo Tomiyama said a few words. Godzilla was very excited. It also proved that he wasn't against merchandising sponsorships when he was featured in Dr. Pepper commercials, 
If only all those poor cities had known that the way to appease Godzilla was to provide him with some tasty Dr. Pepper, there might have been a lot less disaster and chaos. Who knows? Maybe all he ever wanted in all those movies in the first place was a big ol' container of Dr. Pepper. He also played basketball against Charles Barkley for a Nike commercial. Good on Godzilla for using his popularity to make a couple extra bucks. He didn't use his fame to only make money though. Knowing how much proper parenting's valued, Godzilla showed the world how to be a good father and proved that you don't have to be bigger than life to be a good dad when he did an ad council commercial for fatherhood.org. This showed Godzilla's softer side and allowed him to seem relatable to viewers as he was a parent, just like many of them. Steven Spielberg said that Godzilla was an inspiration for creating Jurassic Park because he viewed the 1956 Godzilla King of Monsters as a dinosaur movie that made the viewers believe the events in the movie were happening. He also used Godzilla as an inspiration for Jaws. While Godzilla movies are entertaining in the way that monsters destroy cities and engage in massive fights, we remember what led to the creation of Godzilla in the first place. At a time of war where a character was made to remind a population of the immediate threat that could strike without notice, the country was able to display the message in an entertaining yet impactful fashion. Even in today's iterations, Godzilla remains a protector of the Earth and will do what is needed to protect it, fighting off monsters that would impact the natural balance of things. It serves as a message that with overcrowding of the planet, pollution on the rise, and natural resources being exhausted, the monsters that could be impacting the planet the most might be us. And in that case, we should remember that Godzilla will be there to right the wrongs to the planet. And perhaps, all of these kaiju that have been fighting Godzilla are actually portrayals of the population of the planet itself. Dance party found its way to our house, so we'll go ahead and stop the video now and maybe revisit the subject when King Kong and Godzilla fight again. And King Kong wins. Problem with King wait, Kong and wait. Godzilla. Thanks for watching Comic Book Earth History. See you next time. What? What's the big deal? King Kong's the best. Oh, Have you seen the movie before? Yes. They've done it. Why? Why well, don't think that? Because King Kong's smarter. It's why is humans. he more smart? Why is he smart? Because he's closer to the humans. But Godzilla's a god.